I really wish this title was clickbait. Boy, do I wish this title was clickbait. But alas, my golf clubs were stolen by a couple of 50 plus year old guys in the parking lot of Squaw Creek Golf Club in Fort Worth, Texas. Before I get this video started, before I start telling you about guys about what happened, I would like to just really quickly run through all the clubs that were in that bag, just in case some of you happen to happen upon them. Maybe I can get these clubs back. It's very important to me that I get these clubs back, even if I can get brand new clubs. Like that's not the same. I want to have these clubs so I can match specs on my new clubs to the old clubs so they fit me as well as the old ones did. Wedges, I had a 58 degree Wedgeworks Low Bounce K with this stamping, 54 degree Vokey with this stamping, 50 degree Vokey with this stamping, uh, Titleist T100S, Irons, 5 through Pitching Wedge, 7.0 Project X Shafts, and Victory Green Grips. Uh, the 4-iron is an AP2 bent to T100S specs because my T100S 4-iron caved in and it was not covered under warranty. A U500 Driving Iron 2-iron with a uh, Ventus Black 10TX shaft in it. A Titleist 5-wood with a 9X shaft in it. A Titleist 3-wood, a TS3, it's a one-year model, older, with a 8X shaft in it. And and a driver, a TSI-3, with a 7X shaft in it. All of these clubs, this is very important, all of these clubs have victory green grips on them. They look just like this. They are very uncommon to see in modern golf clubs. If you see modern golf clubs that match this description with victory green grips, I can promise you they are mine. They are my golf clubs. You're not gonna find those anywhere else. The only club that had, does not have a victory green grip on it. That is a red lambkin deep etched on a Scotty Cameron Newport from 2010. It is a very distinct putter. It has a excellent milling pattern that I love that they don't really do anymore. And uh, it has my name stamped in the toe, has my initial stamp in the heel, and it has a dot on the top flange. That putter is going to be really hard to replace if you happen to see it. it. has my name on it and everything. Please let me know. I want it back so badly. Now, I'm going to take you back a couple days. That, that fateful, fateful Saturday at Squaw Creek. I finished my roundup around 1.30 or 2. I'm not exactly sure what time. Went inside to do my stats. Come back outside and my uh, clubs are gone. I go back into the pro shop, ask the pro shop, did my cart kid come in and maybe move my clubs around? Did he bring a set of clubs up here by chance? He said no. Let me check the cart barn, see if they brought them down in there. As we're checking the cart barn, I get a notification from Capital One, my credit card supplier, that my card was charged for $74.98 at the local HEB gas station. That's when I knew my clubs were stolen because my wallet and keys were in that golf bag. I call the police. They arrive. I give them all my information. As we're walking out to my car so we can analyze what I would guess would be considered a crime scene, I get a notification from Split Rail Golf Club right down the road that my card was declined because I had frozen it after the initial charge. My card was declined for $115. I immediately, like right away, call Split Rail. I get the guy behind the counter. He says, hello, uh, thank you for calling Split Rail. Can you please hold? And I said, no, 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 please. Please listen to me, this is very important. Whoever just used my card for $115, whoever just got declined for $115, that was my credit card, those, those guys stole my golf clubs. And the guy behind the counter says, and I love this, the guy behind the counter was like, those guys stole your clubs? I said, yeah, they're walking out right now. The crooks. And then he hung up the phone. Uh, and I think, perfect, okay, we got him. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I was not fast enough in calling, apparently, because he wasn't able to get uh, the license plate number off of the car, but he did get a description of the two guys. Um, two guys over 50, can't really give much more details than that, I don't think, until this case is resolved. And, uh, and an SUV of a tan-ish variety. I probably can't say that either, because it's still an ongoing investigation. When this is all over, I'll post another video with all the information I have. <laughs> I'm just gonna be careful and not use, like, details details for the case. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get them there, but we still know that they used my, my car at a gas station, so the police officer that was helping me out goes to the gas station, gets that footage, pretty much everything the guy at the pro shop said checked out, all the descriptions were right, and while these guys were at the gas station, they used my credit card, they used all the stuff in my wallet, they took all my cash, I had like 100 bucks cash in my wallet, and my wallet was attached to my keys and my AirPods. Took the AirPods out of the AirPod holder, threw everything into the trash, there's a GPS tracker in that, so that was kind of like, they. I think they thought they were losing the GPS signal by throwing that in the trash, so they got away, 
got away without GPS tracking them and I was able to find my keys. So that actually kind of worked out nicely. I offered, oh, by the way, I offered to get my keys out of that trash can and the lady was wearing gloves and she said, no, I got it, it's fine. I ended up putting gloves on and going through it anyway just to see if there's anything else that I could find. Found my whoop charger in the trash can also. Guys, why'd you throw away my whoop charger? Why'd you feel the need to do that? Anyway, so they thought that they had gotten rid of all the GPS trackers. What they didn't know is that my AirPods, which they took, and one of the guys must have taken a liking to because he was using them. Every time he opens up that AirPod case, I get an update on his location. Now this is a huge development. And they keep up opening my AirPods case. I keep getting to see where they've gone to. I keep trying to call the police, but obviously they're busy. They don't have time. I mean, I understand. They don't have time to worry about some kid that just lost his golf clubs. There's other stuff going on. My old teammate, the guy that I was playing with that day, his uncle, who lives like 10 minutes from the course, Ken Odom, shout out Ken Odom, he was able to come pick me up and take me to where my AirPods were pinging to. So they had stayed at this one place for like 20 minutes. I would assume it's their house. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and then I see my, so we drive there. And as we're starting to get there, we see my AirPods starting to walk down the street towards us. We drive past an, uh, an older gentleman and uh, he's not wearing my AirPods, but he's got his hands in his pockets. I would assume he's flipping the case open and shut because every time he flips it open and shut, I'm getting an update on his location. So my AirPods are just walking down the street. He goes to a restaurant. I call the police. I say, hey, the guy that stole my clubs, he has my AirPods at this restaurant. Can you please go get them? And they said, absolutely. So they go pick them up, match the serial number of my AirPods to the AirPods that he was using, and they book him and take him to jail. Now, unfortunately, all he had on him of mine was his AirPods. And uh, AirPods do not equal golf clubs. He knew that and he's not saying anything. So <laughs> there's there's other there are other things that prove that he has my that he has or at least had my clubs. I don't even know if I can say that. I feel like that's vague enough. We know he had my clubs. Um, but still apparently I, I haven't really gotten any updates, but unwilling to talk, unwilling to give up the second guy. And by now, who knows, second guy has probably sold my golf clubs. But after uh, the arresting, the arrest of the guy with my AirPods, I was assuming I was going to get my clothes back that day. So I hung out in um, in that area of Fort Worth for a while till like 1030 until I got a call from one of the officers that told me that it was going to be a few days probably before they found my clubs. So I spent that much time in Fort Worth just kind of hanging out. Um, I then drove back to Frisco where I was staying. I'm going to transition to a video that I took when I got back to the house at 11.50, kind of just talking about what happened. And it, it might be kind of tough to watch because I'm pretty distraught because I have no clubs and no prospects on how I'm going to get new ones. And I have a tournament in two days and everything just seems awful. But I'll go ahead and show that right now. You know, um, as a professional golfer, I've been through a lot of not fun stuff. I've slept in my car, been in the top 10 after one round and gone on to miss the cut. I've missed Q schools and Monday qualifiers by one to two shots. Um, today is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my professional golf career. I uh, I had my clubs stolen today from, from behind my car. I, I put my clubs down behind my car in the parking lot right in front of the pro shop. Went inside to do my stats, came back out, and they were gone. That happened at 2 p.m. It is now uh, it is now midnight. It is now 11.50 p.m. I'm just now getting back to the place that I'm staying in Frisco. Uh, it's an hour and a half away from where I was when my clubs got stolen. And I'm also six hours away from home. In three days, I'm supposed to play a tournament in Garland. And I don't have clubs. I cannot play this tournament. I can't just go to Dick's and buy a new set of clubs. Uh, the clubs that I hit, I have to custom order takes weeks, if not months, for them to come in right now with supply chain shortages. And in addition to that, the clubs that I have right now, swing weights, lofts, lie angles, everything about them was perfect. And now I don't even have those clubs to uh, to go back to as a reference. So now I got to start from scratch in the middle of my season and try to find a new set of clubs. I called the police. They launched a full investigation. They have the guy that stole them, but probably not going to get them back. Uh, at this point, it doesn't look very good because the other guy is still out roaming free. The guy that they have in custody is not talking. Hope those guys got a good four or five hundred bucks out of them. That was five thousand dollars worth of golf clubs they stole. Rangefinder is worth five hundred fifty bucks on its own. Probably gonna cost me five hundred dollars to replace. Wedges, all custom, all stamped, and just gone because some guy wanted to make a thousand bucks at a pawn shop. You know, I'm trying really hard to not be hateful. I understand that everybody's circumstances leads them to make decisions that uh, don't benefit those around them, but it doesn't make me feel any better. 11.53 a.m., April 9th. 
and I don't have golf clubs. Whatever test God is putting me through right now, that's a doozy. <laughs> this is a tough one. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Silver linings. Everything that got stolen was replaceable. They uh, threw out my credit cards, threw out my driver's license, my medical insurance cards, 100 bucks in cash, stole my clubs. It's all technically replaceable. But finding a new set of clubs that fits me perfect, that's gonna be tough. That is gonna be tough. I'll kind of take you through the timeline of what happened tomorrow. I'm, I'm so tired right now. I've been, I've been calling everybody. I've been doing investigative work. I've been a freaking detective for the last 10 hours. Got nowhere. I'm gonna go inside and go to sleep. I'm exhausted. That was sad, but things are better now. And here's how. The next day, I posted my story on TikTok and it got a ton of views, it got a ton of comments, it got a ton of shares. 300,000 people have seen what my golf gloves look like. Thank you so much to everybody who spread that post. Whoever sees this YouTube video, you're gonna be adding to the number of people that have seen my golf gloves. And a lot of people showed support and they wanted to help out. And honestly, when I posted the video, I wasn't really expecting to get as much support as I did, especially not monetarily. I didn't think people really cared about a pro golfer losing clubs, but so many people showed support and I was, I was extremely surprised by that. So. So I started to go fund me just to see what would happen um, with the intention of if I am able to get a free set of clubs somehow or if I'm able to uh, get my clubs back from the police, all the money I raised will go to the first tee. I did the math. I figured out how much it's going to cost to replace my clubs. It was $4,484. With all the pro discounts and, and just kind of what it would cost to replace everything, it was $4,484. And with, within like 24 hours, we raised over what I wanted to raise. I thought we were gonna raise $1,000. I didn't think it was gonna get all the way to $4,484, and we hit that in 24 freaking hours. I don't know what it's at right now. Uh, as we speak, here, let me look. <laughs> this GoFundMe just hit uh, $5,080, and it keeps going up. And, and the way things are going, um, I would imagine all that money is gonna go to the first tee. So we really went from like the worst day of my life to one of the most positive experiences I've ever had. And it's all thanks to you guys. So like the people who stepped up and donated, especially the person who, who donated anonymously $2,500 to really springboard this thing into where it is now. Um, it's, it's incredible what we were able to do, what we were able to do for the first tee, hopefully. Um, assuming things go the way that they look like they're gonna go. Yeah, just wanna give a big, a serious, huge thank you to everybody for helping me raise $5,000 for the first tee. Yeah, I mean, that that was absolutely insane. That's pretty much it. Um, spreadsheet with everything I lost is down below. If you happen to find any of it, shoot me a DM on Instagram, I'll put my handle right here. I don't really know what else to say. Um, when, when I have more information about this case, if, if I get my clubs back and the case is considered closed, I will post a video telling the entire story with really nothing held back. But until then, this is pretty much all I got for you guys. Thank you to everyone that donated to the GoFundMe. If you wanna to continue to donate to the GoFundMe, all the money's going to the first tee, hopefully, um, unless something insane happens and I have to spend it on clubs. But until then, subscribe if you're new, like this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Got some more videos coming up. I had to rush this one through. I, the, the tour series is gonna continue from where it was. I was in Firewheel and I was on my way to Q School. I'm gonna keep posting those in chronological order starting now. Um, but obviously I had to get this up in a timely manner. If somebody finds my clubs, please give them back. Guy number two, I really want my clubs. Please, please give them back. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Subscribe to Patreon. Like the video. See ya.